All right, well, grade nines, cohort B, my second favorite cohort. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. Um, my my favorite cohort. <laughs> All right, so uh, yeah, I've got this weird uh, infinite uh, sort of descending into infinity here, this display that you're seeing right now. But let's get back to like physics, okay? And uh, refraction. And uh, yeah, let's shed some light on, uh, on this topic. It's a little joke there. Okay, so I can just picture you laughing. Anyway, let's talk about refraction. So look, we were talking about this today. So here, you know what refraction is, right? So what happens is when light enters a new medium, it bends. And so here we see the refracted ray and the refracted ray is, uh, is changing direction as it enters this lower medium. And we talked about today how it makes sense that it does that, right? Like when you're slowing down, you're gonna change direction and you're gonna to bend towards the slower medium, okay? So that's refraction in a nutshell. And we also learned about Snell's law that tells us how we could calculate the angle of refraction, okay? Um, based on the angle of incidence and the two indices of refraction, which is like a ratio basically of speed, okay? So, in this case, we have light entering a slower medium and it bends towards this normal line that you see here. And uh, that's what happens when light slows down. Okay, now I can make it even slower. That's about as slow as I can make it here. And in the faster medium, that's about as fast as I can make it on this side. But let's turn it around. What if we're going from fast to slow? And I wanna show you this. Here, let's go for glass. Okay, so now what happens is when you're exiting a medium, you're speeding up. And when you speed up, you're gonna actually bend back towards the slow medium. And that makes sense too. We talked a little bit about that uh, yesterday in class. And so that's what you're seeing here. See here, the beam of light exits the slower medium into the white medium down here, which is supposed to be air, which is faster. Okay, and as you can see, it's now bending away from the normal. Well, there's a limit to how much you can bend away from the normal. So watch, let me show you. Once I get to right about, let's see, that's about as close as it's gonna let me get. Okay, right there. So the angle of refraction, the most it can be is 90 degrees, right? So if you look at this, the most you could have for a refracted angle here is 90 degrees in there because anything greater than 90, it's not even exiting the medium. And that's just a reflection, right? So when that happens, okay, we call the maximum, when you're at the point where you're reaching sort of, you know, the maximum amount of angle of refraction you can have, we call this the critical angle, okay? So the angle of incidence here that corresponds to the maximum angle of refraction at 90 degrees is called a critical angle, okay? Now, it, it varies depending on what your substance is. So if we're going from glass to air, the critical angle is somewhere around 40 degrees or so, okay? And uh, that's what it is when you're going from glass to air. After 40 degrees or so, what happens is you don't get any more refraction, you get what's called a total internal reflection. And here you can see we're only getting reflection and the light can't escape. It's actually a perfect reflection there. Now, I don't know if it'll let me measure angles. Let's see, I'll throw this on here like this. All right, so let's see, what is my angle? Let me center that a little better. Okay, I don't think I'll get better than that. Anyway. Let's see where my critical angle is. I said around 40, let's see if I'm like, yeah, around 42 degrees or so, okay? And then at that point, anything past that angle, so actually maybe around 43, 44, 44, I'm not getting anything. So maybe somewhere around 43, 43.5, somewhere around there is my critical angle. And then after I pass the critical angle, anything past that just gives me a total internal reflection. Okay, and uh, this has various applications. We talked about it yesterday in class. We talked about fiber optics, for example. That's sort of a classic example of something we can use this technology for. But also, like, um, there are uh, reflectors 
um, like there are prisms sort of inside did some cameras, okay, that redirect, the, they're called optical viewfinders, where they redirect the light into your eye. And the most efficient way to reflect light is via a total internal reflection, not using a mirror. A mirror, okay, um, you lose a fraction of the light because it gets absorbed by the mirror, basically. So maybe you lose around 10%, somewhere in that ballpark, 5 to 10% of the light. So you get, at least on paper, a brighter reflection if you want to use this type of thing as a reflector, total internal reflection. It's uh, much more efficient at reflecting than a mirror, even a mirror would be, okay? So anyway, that's it, total internal reflection. So, you know, it's impossible to get a refraction anywhere past around 40, you know, 43, 44 degrees in there or so, okay? All right, now I wonder if it'll allow me to do diamond. Here, let's see. Huh, mystery A, mystery B. What is N? Okay, well. Look at that, okay, so glass on top. That's gonna be confusing. So why don't we go to air on top? So it's bending towards the normal, so it has to be obviously more dense than air. Now what is it? What is it? A little game here. Pardon me. Uh, I guess we could measure it. Okay, so what you could do is we could pick an angle of, ref of incidence of 30 degrees. I'll go here like this. Okay, the angle of refraction seems to be around, oh, what is that? Around 12 degrees. So just taking out my trusty calculator, okay, the sine of theta i divided by the sine of theta r, um, bn2 over n1. Okay, so I'm gonna go 30 sine divided by 12 sine equals, I get 2.4. So 2.4 seems to be the, uh, the index of refraction here. And that is the same as diamond, I believe. So around 2.4. Guys, can you close the door, please? Okay. <laughs> oh, it's great having teenage boys at home. And then, of course, my room is filled with teenagers at school as well. Anyway, these three are quite the handful. <laughs> All right. So anyway, uh, guys, here what we've done is I've just identified the, just using Snell's Law, you can find N, N2 in this case which is the unknown index of refraction of this material down here. And it's a characteristic physical property, index of refraction. So you can identify the substance based on, we talked about in chemistry class, based on its density and its melting point and so on, but also its index of refraction is an identifying feature, in this case of the transparent medium. So there you go, okay? That's refraction in a nutshell. Now, when we get a mirage, like I wanted to talk to you about mirages later, a mirage is an example of a total internal reflection as well. So let's go back to that. Let's go back to just air on top. And here down here at the bottom, let's have, no, oh, actually, you know what? Let's put glass on top. And let's here at the bottom put um, air, okay. So here, we know that we're gonna get a return, internal reflection when we have a high enough angle of incidence, okay? That's past the critical angle. Okay, so, Remember that because basically a mirage, it looks like there's a reflection off of, say, the road surface. It makes it look like it's covered with water. And we saw that there are superior mirages where you can get a reflection off the sky with very odd looking, okay, very unusual. We'd never see one around Ottawa really, but uh, go out by the ocean and um, they're not that uncommon. Okay, so let's go back to our notes and let's see if we can get our head around this. Now you are supposed to, you are, are supposed to at home today um, do the refraction gizmo. Okay, if you haven't finished it yet. And like I said, only go as far as uh, this page here, which I'm not sure what page that is. Let's go back to the top. I think it's page four. There's page one, page two, page three. That's page four, yeah. So just go up to the end of page four and that's it, okay? So we talked about Snell's Law. And let's now 
look back at our notes. Okay, so you do page up to page four, and then let's talk about just a couple of things here. Uh, so we talked about Snell's law earlier today, which is that equation in the box earlier yesterday. That's the equation in the box. And then here, I wanted to talk to you about finding the critical angle, okay? So here's water and then it's going into air. So let me show you how you do a calculation where you can find the critical angle for water. Okay, so watch this. Finding, I'm just gonna move the keyboard. Okay, so now we're finding, oh, I'm sorry, it's on highlight mode. My kids are throwing me off my game here tonight. So finding the critical angle. How do you do that, my friends? Well, here's how you do it. Okay, so we know that the formula for Snell's law is N1 sine theta i equals N2 sine theta r, okay? And that's the general formula for refraction in the system like this. Well, this time when we start in water, so for water, I'm just gonna write H2O, N1, we're starting in the water, okay? The light is going from the water here exiting the water and refracting, bending away from the normal, entering the air, okay? So N1 for water is 1.33. That is the index of refraction of water. Don't ask me how I know that, I just do, okay? Um, all right, so that's the index of refraction for water. And what we're looking for is theta i, okay? This is going to be our critical angle. Okay, now for the air side of things, we know that the index of refraction for air is 1.0, okay? And we're going to set the angle of refraction to 90 degrees. That's the most, or I'll, let me write it like this, the highest possible value. Okay, now, Let's see if we can use Snell's law here and solve that system. Okay, so therefore, I'm just gonna write it. N1 sine theta i equals N2 sine theta r. Okay, so now I plug in my numbers. 1.33 sine of theta i equals 1.0 times the sine of 90. Well, in your calculator, if you wanna take out your calculator at this point, okay, the left side of, or the right side of the equation is just a bunch of numbers. So sine of 90, I know you're in grade nine, so bear with me here, but you're gonna find sine of 90 is just equal to one. So just try it. One times 90, and I go sine equals, so what you get is 1.33 sine theta i equals one. The 90, sine of 90 is also equal to one, and one times one is one. Now divide both sides by 1.33, okay, like that. So I'm gonna divide it by 1.33. I get point, this goes away on this side of course, but I get 0.752, so sine of theta i equals 0 0.752, okay? And then I have to find the inverse sine of that. So in my calculator, I go 0.752 and then I press shift sine negative one, which means like inverse sine. And I get 48.75 degrees. Okay, so the critical angle is at 48.75 degrees. When water, when light is passing from water into air. Now what it means is, if theta i is greater than 48.75, then all you're gonna get is a total reflection. We call it an, an internal reflection and no refraction. Okay, now, if you want to prove that we're right, okay, remember this number, 48.75. Let's go back to our app and let's prove it, okay? So we're gonna start in water, water 1.3, Three, okay, we're gonna exit into air. Now, if I'm right, 
then the angle here, like I'm, I'm already at around 40, but at 48.75, right? So we're almost at 50 then. So here, let me move my little guy. See if I can do it. Okay, right about there. That's getting close to 48. Now if I pass that, okay, see, right there. So that is right around 48.75. And see if I if I, I just passed, I went to 50. I'm just a hair too far. Bring it back a little. See, I'm getting refraction again. It's very difficult to move it actually. See, that's 48 around there. Or sorry, no, I'm past it. I'm sorry. Here's there. That is about 48. So almost 50. And I'm very close to the critical point. This angle around here is close to 90. So let's go. Oh, yeah, I can't quite rate it. But it, see, I, we did it right. Because at 50, no refraction at all. Okay, and that's just one tick past 49. Okay, and I'm just getting an internal reflection. So this little picture here shows you a total internal reflection. All right, let's go back. I had a diagram of this in water, okay? So here, this critical angle, this occurs, pardon me, this occurs at, oh my goodness, huh, how about working for me? Okay, at 48.75 degrees, that's the critical angle between water and air. Anything greater than that, so here theta i is greater than 48.75, all you're going to get after that is a internal reflection. So if you try 50, 60, 70, 80, no refraction, it'll just reflect. And when they reflect, theta 1 and theta 2 okay, are equal. So this is just the law of reflection. And that's it. There you have it. That's everything you really need to know about refraction, everyone. Okay, now I want to talk to you about mirages. And we talked about, I already showed you the video. This is a familiar site to you. And I'll just highlight it for you. I'll just circle it in red. This wet area of ground, or it appears to be wet anyway, is a mirage. You can even see the reflection of the car in it. And a mirage is caused by light that comes from the sky. And what the light coming from the sky is doing is bouncing off the road. But how, is, how does it do that? Well, what it does is it bounces off of a hot layer of hot air. Like one thing that the sun does is it heats the asphalt of the road. And that creates a layer of hot air just above the road. Now, hot air is a faster medium than cold air. So here the air is hot, hot air. It's faster than cold air. And here the air is cold, okay? What happens is you get bending away from the normal as a result of going into a less dense optical media. So you're speeding up, going from cold to hot air. You bend away from the normal. And if you get past the critical angle, so here the light is coming in at a very high angle of incidence. So here it's past the critical angle. And that creates, whoops, and that creates an internal reflection. Okay, and that's it. That's how mirages work, guys. Now here, the Flying Dutchman looks impossible. Here, what's happening is the light is actually like coming, the light that comes sort of up like this goes back down towards the water. And then you can see it. You're, let's say you're standing over here, swimming in the water or whatever, and you're looking up and you think the boat is up here. But really, the boat is down here somewhere, okay? And this time, the hot air is in the atmosphere and the cold is down below, okay? An ocean can do that. It can create a pocket of cold air below a layer of hot air because water stays cool for a longer period of time. It has a very high heat capacity. And so that's how that condition happens. And that's how mirages work. Here's a superior mirage. I like this one. You can see like that. You can really clearly see where the layer of hot air is. It's right about there. Okay. And that light is sort of coming up from the ship and reflecting off of that and then back down into the observer's eye. Okay. And we talked about here the Flying Dutchman and that's it.
Okay, so you've got the gizmo today. I don't want to take up too much of your time. There is a little bit of homework here. Oh, not the gizmo, I'm sorry. The gizmo is something you're going to do, but I have a, a short homework sheet. Okay. And let's see how this goes. There we go. Finally cooperated. Okay, light travels fastest or slowest. Well, if it's less dense, it's better for light. So it's fastest if it's less dense. Now light travels um, fastest with a lower index of refraction. The lower you are, the, the lowest you can get is one. So if you're 1.01, .01, you're very close to one. One is the fastest, okay? So you slow down with a higher index of refraction. So the uh, very high index of refraction means light travels a lot slower in that one. Okay, when light passes from a medium in which it travels slower from into a medium in which it travels slower, it refracts toward the normal. Easy, right? Now, when light passes into a medium that is less optically dense, it will refract away from the normal. Okay? See? So here, a ray of light is passing from air, okay? into A and then B and then C. It says rank them in order of increasing uh, refraction. Well, it, you know, what's happening here is it bends towards the normal. So A has to have like, since when, when it passes from A into B, it bends away from the normal. So here your normal line is like this, remember? So it's bending away from the normal. If you look at the original trajectory of the original vector, if you're bending away from the normal, you're faster. So this is faster. This is slower. Now, when it goes from B into C, again, it bends away from the normal. Okay, so that would mean that this is the fastest medium down here. Okay. And we're just deciding based on the direction that it bends. And that's it. Pardon my yawns. Okay, so here I'm gonna let you use Snell's Law to answer these other questions here. Okay, there's just a few questions and there's only three calculations, so give it a shot. Okay, it's pretty straightforward and that's all the work you have for today. Isn't that wonderful? Now, next time I see you tomorrow, we're gonna do lenses and lenses are a lot of fun, but we have a little quiz on mirrors first, not on this, not on refraction, so let's chillax, guys. Okay, it's no problem. I'm gonna give you more time to reflect on refraction, okay? And maybe you'll see the light. And then once you see the light, we'll have a quiz on refraction too, okay? But let's wait until you get uh, that sort of glimmer of inspiration, okay? Somewhere over the rainbow maybe. I know that's really corny, but anyway. So give this homework a try, and uh, I will post answers to everything shortly. And otherwise, enjoy your day, and we'll talk to you soon. All right. See you tomorrow.